Uh, now I want to bring in Hugh Hewitt, the host of radio's Hugh Hewitt Show. Hugh, good to have you on as well. So what's your prediction for tomorrow? Who comes out the big winner? Well, I have no predictions on Michigan because the polling is uh, problematic at best, and it's an open primary, and they've got a great race on the Democratic side as well as on the Republican side. But I'll say this. Donald Trump has been losing altitude for 10 days. I don't think he's crashed. I don't think he's in a, in a nosedive, but he's been losing altitude. So Michigan, he needs a good double-digit win in Michigan to regain that momentum. And if it's single digits, I think you'll hear the chatter that John was just referencing about uh, Marco Rubio coming back. The early numbers out of Florida from Monmouth Poll look very good for Marco Rubio. He's winning the actual vote. The election's underway in Florida. There's early voting. People are casting ballots every single day. And so I think Rubio's got a little wind at his back. Cruz had a great weekend for Cruz. And Donald Trump hasn't crashed. It's, uh, so why Casey's is he losing altitude? I, I will predict on? that. Well, he uh, had two bad debates in a row. He had a, uh, the KKK uh, imbroglio that he had to break free from. He had to clarify his remarks on torture and uh, uh, families of terrorists. He just had a bad 10 days. Now, every campaign has bad patches. And I think you could look back uh, to Ted Cruz's bad patch right before Donald Trump started to slip on the ice. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I think we're going to a contested convention, Don. I've been saying that You've since been saying 2014. That. Yeah, you have. The rules. And, you have. And I think today, Chris is in the Washington Post, Jay Koss in the Weekly Standard, other analysts up and down the, uh, the network dials have been saying they've been looking at the math. It's very hard to get to 1,237, especially, this is really in the weeds, 9% of the Republican convention delegates are by state law uncommitted. And you take that 9%, you allocate the other delegates, and I don't see any way anyone arrives at the shores of Lake Erie with a Peyton Manning-led Cleveland Browns doing anything other than <laughs> arguing on the floor that they ought to be the nominee. You Peyton got Manning, by the way, that's the big story of the day. It is, it, but I mean, it was expected, and he's going out on a high note. We're, we're really going off the rails here, but he's going out on a high <laughs> note. I think it's a perfect time for him to, you know, to retire. But I have to ask you, I think... And to went, go to the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. And to go run the Cleveland Browns. That's what he's going to do. Yeah. Listen, I, I've got to ask you, though, I think, I, I think in the crosstalk, I cut you off, people couldn't hear you, but you said you think John Kasich is going to win Ohio because if he doesn't, this is life or death for his campaign, right? Well, I am from Warren, Ohio, and I've known the governor for a long time, and he has a great organization, and he has a couple of conservative critics who make a lot of noise, but John Kasich's going to win Ohio. He's a very popular, very successful governor in the Buckeye State, and I think that's going to throw us into a contested convention in which he's in a very, very good position. If he doesn't ramp up in Illinois and other places to nevertheless say, hey, I should be the vice president. I think Marco Rubio is going to make the same case if he wins Florida, and that looks to me to be increasingly likely. Nevertheless, uh, Donald Trump is the leader. Uh, he is by far the most popular with Democrats who cross over and vote in the Republican Party primary. And so, it, as John King just said, you can't beat John King. You're right. He carries it around in his head. I've sat in Green's room with him where he reels off precinct totals from 25 years ago. He talks and, about and different, and like, think, you know, different districts and counties. That, and I'm like, how do you yep. know this stuff? Yeah. Because that, that, he was an AP reporter back in the day. He was covering Dukakis in western Pennsylvania during 1988 campaign. Yeah. So John knows his stuff, and I, I tend to trust him on Let it. Me, let's talk about Florida. Trump is airing a new commercial in Florida. Let's listen. Rubio's been a total no-show in the U.S. Senate with the worst voting record of all. Marco Rubio, another corrupt, all-talk, no-action politician. So we haven't seen too many Trump ads. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me he's playing to win, and he's got a good argument that he's making repeatedly. But I have been in Miami for one day, Don, and I've probably seen 40 ads. Most of them are anti-Trump ads, some of them using his own language, run by super PACs. And I, I don't, it's a 10 major media markets. We have here. one. You want People to listen? Are happiest. Yeah, please. All right, let's play it. When I heard Donald Trump insult my fellow prisoners of war from Vietnam by calling us losers, that was the most infuriating comment I think I've heard from a politician in my entire life. Trump would not have survived the POW experience. He would have been probably the first one to fold. Learn about Donald Trump. He is not what he appears to be. Donald Trump is a phony. Stop him now. How effective is this? Continue your thought. 
It's very effective in Florida. This is probably the state with the most active duty military registered to vote because it is, of course, a military can register to vote anywhere they can declare their residence. There are a lot of them in Florida. If you remember the recount in uh, Bush Gore in 2000, the absentees that came in from the military. That is a devastating ad, and I expect Donald Trump to be up responding with his uh, long standing support of veterans groups for a long time. But nevertheless, an air war is how you win Florida, and Rubio's got the turf at this point. I'll watch every day, and, and new ads will arrive between now and next Tuesday. Yep. And I have to say, Don, I think that Thursday night's debate, and I'm pleased to be a part of that one, is going to be the most significant primary debate in the history of television. Not like a presidential debate, but I've never seen a debate with higher stakes than Thursday night's. Yeah. Okay, well, we all will be watching. We'll be watching you. Thank you, Hugh Hewitt. I'll see you soon. Make, make Always sure a you pleasure, Don. Yep. Thanks.